Episode 5. Is it already? What? It is episode 5. Episode yes. 5. The Empire Strikes Back. Don't do that. Not no. Star Wars. Not Star Wars. Not Star Wars. I apologize. Do you remember what I told you about Indiana Jones? That is the greatest documentary ever made. <laughs> the conversation that George... Second to none. George Lucas had with... Um, who is who is George Lucas and who's the guy that uh, was it? Did Spielberg do Indiana Jones? Uh, I think it was George Lucas and Spielberg who had the. I think so. I don't remember for sure. You you got mad at me when I told you this. Can I tell you again? Am I going to get mad? Probably. <laughs> yeah. So um, they were talking about remember in Indiana Jones when the guy that um, so Harrison Ford plays uh, Doctor Jones. And he has a love interest. Do you remember who that is? I don't remember the story that way. Raiders of the Lost Ark. I okay. don't remember what her name is. When when they meet up again for the first time in the movie, she's mad at him and she's like she's like, I was a child, I was a child and he's like, You know what you were doing and, and she's and they, they have this little lover's spat spat. Well, the conversation, if you look at the extended, I, I forget where it is, but somewhere in the, document, in the documentary that they've done about the movie, they released the, the transcript of this conversation that, that was between, um, between Lu- Lucas and Spielberg. And in that, they were, they were debating how old the girl was in this previous, exist- in this previous lover's thing. Mm-hmm. And they were like, she, the, the, originally in the, in the script, she was supposed to be like 12. Then they were like, that's too out there. And they were like, 14. It's like, oh, that's not edgy enough. And they put it as 13. So Indiana Jones had an affair with a 13-year-old in the, in the back history of this. And the, do you remember what you said to me? Now? Does this ring a bell to you at all? No. You were like, you, were like you, you cursed at me and you were like, if you ever try to ruin one of my child, the greatest movies of my childhood, I will kill you. So I don't remember what you said, but. <laughs> it seems a bit extreme. I probably told you I'd beat the hell out of you. I, yeah, it probably was extreme, but it was, you, you were very upset. <laughs> I'm kind of upset again right now. <laughs> <I've> told, <laughs> um, that's the thing is like, I don't, I don't like Hollywood at all. No. No. And I saw, I saw a thing on the Facebook. Oh, it's been a few weeks, but um, I guess a few of the uh, actors and actresses were saying, well, we're not going to do any movies until, you know, Trump's out of office blah 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 and all i could think was okay, okay. fine yeah that's it that's and a, i don't think they realize that most most of us really don't care i mean i enjoy a good movie yeah that, but it's not going to be a life-changing devastating thing for me for them to stop making movies one of the things that we do as people is we learn through stories you learn like look at how christ taught he mm-hmm. taught in parables yeah he taught that you could learn. And, and, and then the reason that we learn through stories is so that you can, those who have eyes to see, let them see. So that we can take from it the things that are good and leave the things that, that we don't understand. And then when we come back to it again, we'll learn, we'll yield no, more, more knowledge and we'll understand better. Stories are relatable. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why, that's why it's so dangerous to have so much of our entertainment and stuff be brought from Hollywood or from the mainstream media or even from like now that we've got more streaming platforms like hulu and netflix and blah 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 that's still more the same though it's it's yeah people controlling what they want you to see and so that's why it's that's that's one of the things that I, we've alluded to in the past but why it's so important for i guess why i feel the urgency for us to do this and and put it out there is so that people have other options of things that might be entertaining or sometimes entertaining sometimes not but that's that's options is what we need as people and as we get better at at editing as i as we get better at editing and stuff like that then it, these will be more entertaining you know we're just learning yeah you do it all i don't <laughs> i'm just a pretty face you're the you're the the talent yeah <laughs> <laughs> scraping the bottom of the barrel no <laughs> uh, well, fred you do do a pretty good job of Editing everything, filming everything, putting it all on the internet. I just show up. <laughs> well, you do a good job of inviting people to like our Facebook groups and stuff like that. I, I don't. I. I told you about how I was a. Uh, I did cold calls in Romania. Yeah. I used to do. I, I was making two dollars an hour. Two two thirty, I think it was. Uh, working under the table. I was an illegal. I was an illegal alien. I was working <laughs> under the table. I was putting other people out of business. Awesome. In Romania. Good job, friend. 
I don't know if I, I, I don't know, I don't I don't know if it was actually under the table. I don't know if it was actually illegal, but I suspected it was, but I never really didn't know what to do. I was stupid enough to didn't, not know what to do to ask. But um, anyways, I, I made cold calls to people in the UK. So I was working for a company that sold phones on the phone to the UK. They're based in the UK, but I was in Romania and there was a call center in Romania. And so it was just like, I hated having to call people that don't want to talk to you and then try and tell them that they want to buy a phone on the phone they want to buy your product <laughs> yeah it's it, i just hate cold calls and i hate i hate that interaction and and it's 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 completely different when it's in a different setting and stuff but i don't think i could work in the business where i had to interact with other human beings <laughs> and yeah it's uh, and i don't know where i was going with that well in a business capacity i have yeah. co-workers and if it's anything like how i talk to my co-workers i would I would be in the bread line. <laughs> because I just, I don't, I don't play people's games very well. I'm very cut, let's get straight to the point. Tell me what it is. I think that's one of the things I really like about our friendship is that I don't have to wonder like, and it's the same with you, you don't have to, we don't have to wonder where each other's stands on things if i don't like something i'll tell you and if you don't like something you'll tell me yeah that's important in a in a, any kind of relationship where you want longevity of your relationship you want it to last you need to be able to communicate especially conflict but before i get, get into that um if you guys do and, and this is speaking to the audience that feels weird but if you guys do all have three any, of you. all three of you <laughs> if you have any suggestions or um or tips on things that we can do to make it entertaining or if you have feedback, please send that to... Um, you can hit the Facebook page, or did you put the email links? E the email, so I've got an about page on, if you go to elders-rising.com, so eldersrising.com with a hyphen in between the two words, um, and then there's an about page, and I have a link to, I've got like our Facebook page, I've got um, links to any of the po um, podcast download, where you can download it, and I've got e our email address there. Yeah. And so, and the email address is eldersrisingpodcast at gmail.com, if I remember right something like that i don't know you sent it to me yeah <laughs> but we're we're I'm getting... technologically retarded <laughs> i don't know what it is <laughs> we're we're getting better at this and hopefully we'll, hopefully it's becoming more engaging um but getting back to like the longevity of a of a friendship or a relationship whether that's in business whether that's friendship whether that's like with your spouse you there um there's there's certain times where you have to be very clear in your communication and Communicating and placating concern and put it and like just kind of making the concern go away doesn't last in the long run. It might make right now go smoother because it's like, okay, we, we handled that concern. We put a pin in it or we'll talk about it later or we, we, you, 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 you can detract from what's going on. But to build a strong relationship that's going to last in any setting, you have to be able to to articulate and to come to agree, uh, come to a, at least acknowledge and, and and process that concern or that difference of opinion, in a way that's that's healthy, so that that both parties in the relationship can share their their actual intimate feelings or their 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 opinions that are that are hard to share. There's a book that I read that's called um, Crucial Conversations. It was really really good, um, and I read it for management, like for for getting to know how to work with people when you don't understand like what's going on and stuff like that but um it really it really illustrated a lot of ways that you know in most of our most of our talking is not that important to the overall flow uh quality of the relationship but every now and then we have a conversation that is important and it's like okay we got to take extra attention and make sure that you understand the the conflict make sure that everybody can can piece out what they're what their what their problem is and then then you can get over it yeah. say what you mean and mean what you say you know that's what that's what christ taught he said let your yes be yes and your no be no and that's where if you if you get into a conversation where people are like interpreting what you mean oh he said that but he means this or i said this hoping he'll understand that you know that it's like that's not the way christ taught us to speak and that's not the way christ taught us to communicate well anybody that's watching this or anybody that knows me and has had a conversation with me i don't beat around the bush no. it's very straightforward you know this is this that's that 
And I mean, I talk very deliberately so it's not open for interpretation. I'm not going to coddle. I'm not going to coddle people. It's going to be a very straightforward, blunt communication. A lot of people think that. Well, you're mean. Yeah, I mean, or just very aggressive when. Okay, I'm kind of mean. I guess I'm kind of aggressive. (laughs) Here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I don't think that people realize this side of it. You are not going to be malicious. I, I've noticed that about you is like when someone is does something stupid or it like needs to. Uh, for instance, remember when when I broke your windshield? Uh-huh. Uh huh. I yeah. was I was so like I was worried because that you loved that car. You loved that car, and I, I miss that car. <laughs> I broke your windshield. I put this big old crack in it because I was putting my <laughs> foot on the windshield, and I don't remember what I did, but I I looked at you and I just I, didn't you, I hit you with that car? <laughs> <laughs> Because I seem to remember in my mind's eye right now me hitting you with my car and you rolling up on the... <laughs> Seems like we did super stuff like that. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I I think... I... <laughs> we're idiots. Yeah, we're dumb. But, um, <laughs> Anywho. Anyways, that that was a time where you loved that car. You would get so mad if I slammed the door on that car. That's because I always got in trouble when I slammed all my <laughs> dad's doors. Don't yeah. slam the doors. And, anyways, I remember breaking that windshield and I looked at you and I was like... I'm going to be in so, but like, I, I felt really bad <laughs> and you knew that I felt bad and you knew that I didn't do it on purpose and stuff. And you like laughed at me and you're like, life goes on, you know? And it was one of those things where I was like, I remember realizing that you, you don't relish in the, in the, the conflict itself. You are not afraid of the conflict to get across your, to express your, your opinion, but yet you're not going to be malicious about it. And that's something that people need to realize it's not when you get someone who is malicious who is does want to be um do th- do something and just like rub your face in it and be be mean about it that's where it's like yeah distance yourself from that person because that person's not they're not in a good place and and it, be be kind to them but don't let them walk over you don't let yeah. them control you or you know don't be a sissy don't be a sissy <laughs> everybody, Tweety Bird. everybody has a different way of communicating. Some people are very, not very many, but some people are very straightforward, very blunt, and just manage your expectations from the start. And other people are, and I don't, I don't know why people are this way, like either forward or kind of passive with the way they communicate. I don't, I don't know, but a lot of it probably comes back to. Uh, being in the military, you just communicate the goal or the information, and then everybody just kind of goes about and does their things. I think with you, because you were you were um, fine being aggressive before the military, back in high school and stuff. You weren't, but you weren't as focused about it. The military helped you focus that to to articulate that um, that communication. I think because I I I didn't know back in high school. I remember. I didn't know, and the part of it is me not being developed as well. I was just being a stupid kid, you know. But I didn't know how to um, articulate that. I, I don't know. The, the, I didn't know how to talk to you in, in, in that kind of a way where, where when you were, like, in a mood, you know. <laughs> in a mood. <laughs> yeah. I could get angry. I could still get angry. Yeah, but I'm trying to think of something, like, mean to say. <laughs> it evades you. You don't have the. Mm-hmm. You don't have the natural inclination towards that as I do. No, I don't. <laughs> You're a better person than I am. Mm, I got my own things. <laughs> We're all people. That's the thing. It's like it's so easy in life to compare your strengths against other people's weaknesses, and that's not fair to yourself. And on the flip side of that, it's so easy to compare your your weaknesses against other people's strengths. And I think I said that reverse, but you get what I'm saying. It's it, we're we're all individuals, and we have our own strengths and weaknesses. And I love one of my favorite scriptures has always been, um, I think it's in Nephi, the second Nephi nine. Um, Nephi, he's he's berating his his brothers basically for their sins, and then he's like he talks. It, there's one section in there where he's like, I pray the God of my salvation that he view me with his all searching eye, and he's like, I pray for God to see me with with everything that he has and see every part of me and just see me for me, and it's like that's that's where we need to be. Is you know, 
we need to open <clears throat> open ourselves to 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 the Lord and be like okay this is these are my weaknesses these are my strengths help me be better you know and and be accept yourself for who you are but don't be content with yourself and don't give up on yourself and, and things like that absolutely acknowledge your strengths build on those keep continually improving on your strengths but also recognize your weaknesses and do your best to improve on that as well you should always be continually improving building those blocks on top of each other to just become a better person and there's things that we obviously will never master in this lifetime we're flawed yeah. beings and but you know we've talked about this before you know you just just try your best that's all that was ever asked of us. That's all that was ever expected of us is just to do your best. And that's just being a decent human being. Treat people decently and try your best to be a better person. Yeah, last week we touched on it a little bit, but there's, I really love, like, charity is one of those topics that is, I mean, that's the pure love of Christ, charity. And that's when you have charity for your fellow man you love unconditionally and with that love you want the best for them but a lot of times we we try and say oh i'm going to be charitable and you you stop thinking and you stop you just forgive everything and you just it's a blank slate you think oh everything everybody i'm going to just completely um say everybody's got the good intents everybody has good intentions everybody is doing good things and i'm gonna i'm not gonna think for myself in that aspect and that's 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 taking it too far to the other extreme where you're not actually getting to know people and you're not actually you're not actually being wise you're being foolish in that sense and so it's 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 an interesting balance that i think um I, and i've talked to you about this i don't know if i've mentioned it on the the podcast but i think that we we really in in christianity in general i'm not talking about the church specifically the church but the church included definitely we naturally satan has done a very good job at getting us to worship the lamb of christ but Christ is both the lamb and the lion. He, he is both the alpha and the omega. And it's, it's one of those things where we, we focus on the, the, the comfortable parts of the gospel, which is it's comfortable to say, oh, love your fellow man. It's comfortable to say, turn the other cheek. It's comfortable to say these other things. But Christ also taught, don't cast your pearls before swine. He said, be wise as a, as a serpent and innocent as a dove. He said, if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one he said i mean christ he he said i did not pray I, I do not pray for the world but i pray for those who thou hast given me from the world speaking to god and it's just it's one of those things where if we just have this blank slate attitude towards everybody and just blanket love then we're going to be taken advantage of and we're not protecting and we're not nurturing our children in a in an environment that is conducive to them growing up with christianity Sorry, more rant. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we should we should love everybody, but that doesn't mean that you should not be cautious about it. Um, everybody should know that there's people out there that are going to take advantage of you if they can. But uh, you know, you should love everybody, but be cautious. And this is this is where I'm. My actions and the things that I say are kind of conflicting because you know, my wife knows, pretty much everybody knows that I sit here and I'll, I'll talk all day about how much I hate people and despise <laughs> them and that they're stupid and they just piss me off, right? Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if I'm in a mood. Yep. What are your moods? <laughs> what are my moods? <laughs> but the other, the flip side of that coin yeah, I may not like them. I may hate the things that they do, the decisions that they make, and the fact that most people don't go through like a cognitive process of things that they're doing. So you, you mean they're, they're being stupid? They're not deliberate actions. People don't typically go about doing deliberate actions. They just kind of do whatever. They're blown you, about you know, like the, blown the about. leaves that are in the yes. autumn. Yes. But anyway, the, the flip side of that is, you know, I just generally have a dislike of people if I don't know them. I, I don't know if this is, you know, everybody. I know that my 
my instance is probably more severe than <laughs> most others. But for most of those people, if it came down to a life or death situation, I would throw myself right into the middle of that fray. Because, yes, they may annoy me and I may not like them, but I love them. And I just, I would be the first one to jump into the middle of that fight to save them. Most people. There's people that I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, one of those things that I, I think that are, we, we, a lot of times when we try to live the gospel, there's so many things that you can checkbox okay, I did this, I did my, my whatever, fill in the blank. I said my prayers, I read my scriptures, I didn't say these words, I did these things, I did that, I didn't do that thing, I did this. You know, it's like a checklist. Okay, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. And it's, and it's creating habits, and those habits are good as a first step. But we can't just extend ourselves to habits. We have to actually consciously live the gospel. When Christ was asked, what's the most important commandment? You know, it was... Love God, and then love your fellow man. And it's like, how do you how do you put that in a checkbox? It's like, oh, I love people, and it's like, oh, do you say it? Okay, your show me your your deeds. You know, that's that's why there's that section in the the New Testament where it's like, the the devils themselves they know God is God, and they'll say He's God, but then they tremble. And it's like, <laughs> our words aren't good enough. We have to do. We have to live what we are, and and. And that's why I love that concept of your, your conversion to Christ is uh, the best indication of your conversion to Christ is the way you treat your fellow man, is the way you treat people. And, and that doesn't, I don't think that that means being the, the coddling type necessarily. Some, for some people it might. Some I don't know. Everybody, yeah. It's a case-by-case -case basis. Exactly, exactly. Some people are different and it also depends on where people are at in their life. Mm -hmm. um, we've all been in places in our lives that... Being coddled is what we needed. I know that I've been there. You're, you've, you, I don't think you ever left there, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was when I was there, there was nobody because there was nobody there to coddle me, or nobody willing to coddle me because the at where I was in that life and there in that point in my life and how society understands when, um, well. Society doesn't understand um, how to treat our people when they come home from war. Um, you know, everybody expects. You know, they they watch movies and oh, they're fine. You just go back into and life. Then you just come home and you know it's like you flip a switch, on off on off on off. You know, you're home now. You're not over there. And I don't know how many times people told me that you're not over there anymore. Part of me still over there. Part of me will never leave over there. And, you know, I was angry. And you remember. Mm -hmm. You remember when I came home. Yeah. I was angry. Um, I was hurt. I felt betrayed. I still feel betrayed. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just hard. I, you go from being in some of the, some of the worst conflict, you know, that the world is seen and you go from being in it every day up to your eyeballs and then all of a sudden they just pull you out of it and then a week later you're home without you know and, and where I where I was in the National Guard yeah I deployed I went overseas I fought in that war but when we came home you don't go back to garrison where you're still with all these other guys that you were over there with, you come home, and then you're just out and about. You're just cut off. And especially where I was a volunteer on that first one, everybody was from the southern part of the state. I'm from the northern part of the state. I was completely cut off. You had nobody. I had nobody. And I came home, and the way that I was treated um, by members, by <laughs> members of my own ward, you know, more or less telling me that everything that I had just done wasn't good enough really was like a brutal sucker punch. So here you are, you know, a 20 year old kid who's broken physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, you know, just broken. And then you come home 
and um, it, for for me, it was everybody that says, "What? Are you, well, what are you gonna do now? Oh, I'm gonna find a job. I'm gonna, you know, find a girl, settle down, get married. You know, move on with my life." Mm-hmm. Well, what about a mission? Well, what about a mission? I just went. I've been gone for two years. Well, that's the sa- That's not the same. You're serving your country. That's not the same. When you're in the service of your fellow man, you're in the service of me. Is not the same. I went because I, I had prayed about what I was supposed to do. You know, do I go over there? Do I go on a mission? And the inspiration that I dis- that I received was to go there. And then, you know, I heard it from family. I heard it from from other members of the church, and you know, basically everything that I'd heard because I gave everything I had over there. I'd gone, I'd gone door to door, been in, in torture houses, I'd been, you know, seeing kids used as weapons, um, I'd lost friends, and I did all those things because that's what was asked and what was required of me, and I did that, and I came home and I was told that wasn't good enough, and for the people that you know, you really kind of do it for, to come from then, it was a betrayal. And then for the people that sent us over there to turn around as soon as you're done and just cut all ties, saying, yeah, we realize that you gave a lot and you sacrificed a lot, you know, you, you got shot, you got blown up. You still have shrapnel in your body. You walked on a broken ankle for six years, you know. That's all cool. Thanks for your service. But there's the door. And some people will wonder why I'm bitter. And why I'm angry. Because I did all those things out of the love of my heart. And, you know, a lot of times it feels like it was for nothing. Which, that's not really the case, but that's how it felt. Yeah. But coming full circle back to where we started, <laughs> you don't know where people are at. And we need to sometimes, when somebody's angry and bitter, sometimes we just need to push that aside. And they need, they need to be loved. They need to be coddled sometimes. And... It it can be hard for us to it can be hard for us to notice that and see that and actually act on that because it's hard. It's a hard thing to do, especially for men yeah. to break down that barrier and be willing to cry with somebody, to wipe away somebody else's tears. And those are barriers that that we need to break and that we need to that we need to overcome to help build our fellow man and that's where we're failing as a society in a lot of ways it's it's easy to think of like oh this is the right thing or this is the it's easy to make judgments on things but really i think there's a reason why the prophet has focused on us learning how to listen to the spirit us learning it's it's no longer sufficient for us to just fit the mold of who we're supposed to be we have to follow the spirit and 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 lead in ways that aren't prepared in ways that aren't easy in ways that aren't clear we have to be what god wants us to be and the only thing that we can do to do that is to to learn how to follow the holy ghost to learn how to follow that that spirit that that we have been been given it and we have covenant to covenanted to receive I think I was just thinking when especially for men it's it's hard to it's nice it feels good to reach down and help someone stand but sometimes people aren't ready to stand no. And it's just as important to, at the right time, 
sit down next to somebody and just go through what they're going through with them. And that's, I think that that's what came to my mind. And a lot of times, <clears throat> a lot of times you don't have to sit there and, you know, try to fix their problem. A lot of times all it takes is putting your arm around somebody's shoulder and saying, if you need anything, let me know. And just be with them, be there for them. And it's not hard. But, I mean, you do have to open yourself up, too, to be that. There's a concept where it's like, so we all think that someone's going to come and solve a problem. There's there's always going to be, you're always going to get help. Like in, in White Knight? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking the cavalry. You always oh, think yeah. some, the cavalry's going to come. And, like, so I had this experience where... You are the cavalry. <laughs> that's that's exactly that's exactly it. We got to stop getting to this idea where you you fix the problem well enough for somebody to actually fix the problem. We need to start fixing our own problems. We need to start fixing mm -hmm. the problems ourselves, and 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 being there. And when it's not your problem to fix, you don't have to fix other people's problems, but support them and be there for them and help them if they want it. Be there to that they can lean on you so that you can be their cavalry. And it's like, don't don't abdicate that responsibility to some future person or event or something else we are the ones that have to go stand up and to rise and to to help you know the whole lift where you stand that's so powerful because the only way that there's there's movement is if everybody does something if everybody does that little bit that you can it's like in finding nemo just keep swimming <laughs> When they scoop up the net and all the fish are trying to go every which way and they're not oh, making yeah. any headway. And there's Nemo and Martin. Is that his dad's name? Anyway, they tell everybody to turn around and just swim the same direction. Because if we're all going a different direction a million miles an hour, you're not going to go anywhere. So you got to, we all have to be, just keep swimming in the right direction. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> But, when uh, you no, say no. copyright, is that like Disney? Are they coming after us next? You all know they are now that you said or their name. Um, but no, I mean, being being a man, we associate being a man with being strong, and that's not always necessarily a a physical um, description, a talent, a description of our talents and stuff like that. It's a broad encompassing description and we need to be strong um i mean as best we can physically and mentally and physically but uh, being strong also is opening yourself up to those who are to those who are those who need it there's nothing wrong with letting other people see you cry there's nothing wrong with crying with somebody who's crying because you hurt so bad for them. I've been there. Hell, I almost cried just a couple of minutes ago. I cry every time I see you. But I, <laughs> but I was tough. <laughs> um, That's the thing, though. It's like we... The, the strength isn't, oh, they didn't cry. Oh, they cried. You know, that doesn't matter. The strength is you are who you are regardless of what's going on. You You have the heart to feel... You have that broken heart that, in a way, we, we break for Christ, but also it's, it's not pride. It's, you, it's not the, you, don't, you don't have that hardness of pride. You have that strength of, of humility, that strength of, of meekness, but yet strong. And it's like, no matter what happens, you're going to be you. Your family is going to be able to rely on you. Your family is going to be able to count on you to do what you need for them but also to be there with them, to not just be a, a, a cold thing that they can build from, but to be something that they can build that, that encompasses uh. them, around them, that protects them. Yeah. We need to build, we need to, <coughs> jeez, we need to build up, not just out. We have to build up first. You have to build a foundation before you can build the wall of the moon. Oh, that's weird. Weirdly awesome. Do you want me to go move the camera? Mm, if you want to. I'm going to do it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah.
Oh man. But getting back to like just the getting back to the family aspect of things, it's so important for us to acknowledge the importance of both a husband and a wife. Like the the in in the way that we naturally complement each other is so it's divinely inspired. It's or it's divinely created. And and when you see the, the culture that we have pushing to erase the difference between masculine and feminine, to erase the difference between mother and father, to erase the importance of of our genders, that is it's it's satanic. It really is satanic. And I don't mean that in a way that, oh, you need to hate people who are confused about who they are or what they are. That's not the case. I mean, you you should pity the people that, that are in that kind of a, a turmoil because that's got to be hell. That's got to be so difficult to not know, to, to associate your own identity so much with something that you don't understand or that you don't, you, you've, 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 it, there's a reason why it's so hard on people. And you need to empathize with that, but in the same breath, you, there's no place for us to, to make that be a normal, to make that be a, a thing that is what we, that is acceptable. Because it's not. It's, it's Satan trying to, to play on the, the insecurities and fears and innocence of niceness. those. On the niceness. Is that what you said? They're, it's relying on our niceness. It's, yeah, it is. Because when it comes down to it, if you're not teaching your, your daughters to be young ladies and young women, if you're not teaching your sons to be young men and to, to be masculine and feminine, then you're not, you're not doing your part as a parent. Okay. And anybody that says that women are equal to men is a fool. Women are far better. Far better than we are. In just about every That's not coming up this road, aspect. No. No, I think somebody was in a driveway. Okay, good. Hoser. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, as a man, if you think that it's your place to keep a woman in her place, if you think it's your place to, to um, dominate your wife, then you're, you're a pitiful man. If you are not the type of man that can lead and be the head of your household and that your wife willingly and chooses to follow, then you need to work on your own masculinity. And that's not like, oh, be tough. That's you need to be solid in who you are and learn how to make good choices and learn how to be bend the knee to God. Because as we follow God as men, our wives see that and they follow us because that's what that's that's what we're designed to do is we're the, the man is meant to be the head of the household. But that doesn't mean he's the dominating force in the household. Not through, what is it in the Doctrine and Covenants where it says, as soon as a man relies on his a priesthood or authority or whatever, then amen to that, the priesthood or that authority. And it, that's very true in yes. masculinity. If you're, if you're relying on your pr- physical prowess or your any, anything to dominate over your family, then you're, you're the Cretan. Cretan? I always, I always get that word mixed up. <laughs> It's because of uh, Monsters Inc. Yes, yes. <laughs> you one-eyed cretin. It's cretin. <laughs> Don't get me coughing. Don't. <laughs> That's why I brought water. Is because I think it's <laughs> less likely for me to be. Probably not, Fred. <laughs> it's probably not. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Um. Let's see what else. What else do we have to... I guess on that topic, what I said, a lot of people will find, oh, that's offensive to say that the man is the head of the household and he leads, the, he leads his wife and stuff like that. And, you know, C.S. Lewis put it very well. He had a little um, thing that he mentioned where he talks about how when you have a, a household and if the woman wears the, the pants in the household, everybody is embarrassed by it, even the woman. Where it's like, if, if everybody can see when a woman wears the ha- pants in the household, and even that woman is not proud of being wearing the pants in that household. And he's like, okay, that's one indicator that the woman is not meant to be the leader of the household. The other indicator is a woman is, is, is wired, is naturally going to 
like the mama bear. They're going to protect their children at all costs, no matter what. They're going to fight to the death. If you want to see true fury, then harm a child, and that woman will come after you with <laughs> with vengeance. And try to get between her and her and her children. Exactly, and and that's that's natural, that's normal, and it's it's important. Um, when but when in a society, let's say a child th- goes and breaks a window at a neighbor's house, or does something stupid. When that neighbor comes, it's far more likely, uh, and this is generalities, obviously, but it's far more likely that the the husband will look at it and judge the child, and not not just naturally take the side of the child, because they'll be like, okay, what's going to happen? Like, okay, they did something stupid. Let's okay, I apologize. You know, you need to fix that, son. Lots of women will do that too. I'm not saying that there's, again, this is a generality, but there is that mama bear tendency where it's like, my child did nothing wrong. I'm going to protect my child. And that's, that, that, that is another indication of, of why God designed it to be the man as the head of the household. Did I go on a tangent? No, I hear some splashing. Oh, I thought I heard a fish. Did they say fish in this thing? Uh, it could have been a carp. It could have been a muskrat. It could be any number of things. Uh, <laughs> uh-oh. What is it? My light's dying. Oh. I was impressed. Not uh-oh that. as to... I was impressed that you had a flashlight on you, but then again, I guess I do have a flashlight in my backpack, too. I keep it in my pocket. I know. You're always... It's part of my EDC, Fred. You're, you're always prepared. Everyday carry. Does anybody ever... Flashlight, take pocket knife... EEC? Every- EDC. E- E-D. E- Echo Delta Charlie. E. Papa Smith. Char- <sighs> Fandango? No. 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 Uh, yes. I do have my flashlight. <laughs> I got this recently and I was oh, like... Oh, wow. It's a good thing we're not in a life or death situation. I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, Judas. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so mature. I can't find my... You're a child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, EDC, everyday carry. So, part of my EDC... Is this little flashlight, pocket knife, my phone, my carry gun, and a spare magazine? Obviously, like my car keys and stuff. Is Walk. is EDC something that they talk about in like the army, or is that just what you call it? Uh, no, yeah. it's just it's it's a phrase that's out there. It's not my phrase. I heard it from who knows how many different places, but I mean, it's just like the things that you have with you every day it was interesting i was i was talking to mitch and we we're i had a question for him me i'm telling i'm talking to these people now not you quiet i'm t- i was talking to mitch uh <laughs> what was it what was the Damn. thing <laughs> the the thing that we were um so a lot of times a lot of times there's things especially about guns like i didn't know what a um what was it, the, the can putting a can on a oh yeah you're asking me about what cans and and gassing means yeah for for your for your ars and stuff like that and um, I didn't know what it was. And a lot of times, like, there's these questions where it's like, oh, you can Google it and stuff. But it's like, it feels weird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just want a friend that knows things that you can ask them directly. And it's like, <laughs> it, we all have our, di- our different realms of, of, of like, what, we, what we're competent in. Our different realms of competency. And Mitch uh, is my go-to when I ask, ask questions about guns and stuff like that. And so... Uh, what did what did I say? It was like we should have a section. We should have a section where you want to ask the <laughs> where you want to ask badly things oh. when you're too embarrassed to ask about. Oh, things. let's see. What I'll... did I say? It was I, I worded it in a very funny way. <laughs> Look at me, damn! I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, he says we should have a section where we talk about manly questions you want to know, but are too chicken to ask someone who is actually manly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That garnered an LOL. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so if you have questions that you're that you're too t- chicken to ask manly, then you probably should make a, a a real manly email address so that you we don't know your real email address, and then send us an email, and and we'll answer your your questions that you are too 
two chickens to ask someone who's. And really if we're manly. not manly enough to do it, we'll find somebody who's manly. Yeah, enough. we'll find <laughs> someone more manly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. Uh, I, I actually, I really do like that because that's. Um, so when we talk about the things that are important, um, um, to um, current events, what's going on, and addressing it, and you know, building each other up, mm-hmm. and I mean, we we talk about a few different subjects, and sometimes we go off on tangents. Yeah. But um, it's true. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I like I like that because we can. We can build knowledge for each other. Yeah, somebody might ask a question that you already know the answer to, and you're like, well, no shit. <laughs> you know, and that's fine. That's fine. Because, um, like like you said, we all have our different realms of expertise and knowledge and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot about guns. I don't know very much about computers. I know a decent bit. I, I can kind of repair cars. <laughs> kind of, being the operative phrase. <laughs> Um, but I mean, that, that's fine. You know, um, if you have, if you have questions, you can either message us on the, the Facebook or on, on the Elders Rising page, or you can find the email and send it in. And if we don't know the answer, by God, we'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> so. It'll give but, us something to do that is, I don't know, if it's, if it's good, if it's helpful, we're more than happy to help. Absolutely. Um. Another thing that I that I like to do and want to try and do is little like uh, self sufficient, being self sufficient tips and like mm-hmm. preparedness mm-hmm. and stuff like that is something that I'd like to add to these because that that helps lift us up and strengthen us as a whole. If you're if you've got something that you would like to share as well, because a lot of us here's the thing that I've noticed. A lot of people are doing different things to be prepared in different ways. Um, I've got a, a neighbor, a guy in my ward right now, that he built a generator that is a solar power generator. And, um, and it, it's just phenomenal. Like, it's super cool. And it, it, he built it with a purpose in mind where he wanted to have, he wanted to make sure that if um, he doesn't have power, doesn't have access to power, they could run the mill that they use for, for grinding their, their wheat into flour. And it's just on like a, I don't know if it's on a bot, uh, bo- like some kind of like uh, mixer or, f- or something like that. But he wanted power to do that so they didn't have to do it by hand. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, for his food storage. So he, he, had a perp- he had a purpose and a goal in mind. And then he started, he put something into action to where he actually built it. And um, I got the plans from him. And I'd like, I'll, I'll, once I put it together, I'll probably, I mean, on, either on the website or somewhere, I'd like, to, I'd like to take, if you've got stuff that you've done that would be helpful for other people, share it share it and it, i mean there's lots of places you can share it but this is it we're interested and um i don't know how fast we'll move on it because we're i mean we do this on the side we're just trying to add what we can f- value what we can to, to people's lives but if you've got something to share eventually we'll get it up we'll eventually we'll get it up in a place where where other people can can benefit from it too because you've put time into what you've done you've put time into the efforts that you've that you've had for for your own preparedness and the time that you've put in can benefit the, the, the preparedness of others. And so that's, that's what I'm... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one thing I was going to say before we go on. Another tangent. Uh, <laughs> the, the whole masculinity thing. A lot of people think that masculinity is is being too scared to like it's I mean there's this oh you don't want to you don't want to look the fool or you don't want to ask a question that is uh, you, you're too chicken to ask someone who's more masculine you know and it's like there is there is a part of there's a part of, of of masculinity that is competence and you want to build competence in yourself and those around you but there's also the balance to that is having the humility to know when you don't know something or when you can learn something even if you're an expert in something like I love those videos that you sent me that were um, the guys shooting where the one guy he I mean he he had done I don't know he was a he worked in security now but he was a marine he did a lot like the the shorter guy he oh he's a cop is he a cop <coughs> yeah okay anyways he he went off and he was like he was like you know, this is my opinion, but I, I'm still learning. You know, and and he was a guy that he was how, he was shooting how fast? Like, <sighs> it sounded like it was. Auto. It sounded uh, yeah, exactly. It was it was incredible, and he was they were doing some really really cool stuff uh, maneuver wise and military wise and uh, I don't, whatever tactically, and um, tactically. I don't know if that's the right way to say that. I'm, <laughs> I'm still I'm still proficiently. Learning. Proficiently. He's doing things proficiently. Thank you. 
Um, but a part of a part of being masculine is knowing that you can learn from others as well, and and mm -hmm. not being so prideful that you're like, oh, this is the stupid idea. I'm the right person, and you're <laughs> the wrong person. It's like. You know, at some point, some points, you're going to be right, and that's that's fine. But if you're relying on yourself to be right, and you're relying on that pride, then it's like you're going to set yourself up to fall eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last couple of things that I want to talk about are going to be um, preparedness wise. Um, so on the foods, on the food and provision side of it. Um, look at storing some other things that you may not use may not be useful to you such as um, coffee you can you can put some coffee in with your uh, with your food storage you can put alcohol in there because those are good items for um, well one f um, disinfecting wounds um, and I think we like to forget that for thousands of years before modern medicine and NyQuil, the, it was used as a medicine because it does actually have medicinal use and properties. Um, but so coffee, alcohol, that kind of stuff, I, for me, I think is good for barter and medicinal uses. And those are things that aren't too terribly expensive. They're kind of easy to put into your food storage as long as like coffee is stored correctly, you know. Um, the other thing, um, preparedness wise would be, um, first aid, trauma kits, um, um, just regular boo-boo kits. Yeah. Um, scraping your knees. It's, we, we've forgotten the time when if you got a, if you stepped on a rake and, and it went through your foot, that was a death sentence. You know? Yeah. That we, yeah. we, we don't think of those times when that, but. But that's also where the alcohol comes into place too. <laughs> that. That's how the the Jack Daniels died. He mm -hmm. stubbed his toe and died mm -hmm. of an infection. Really? Because he stubbed his toe. Well, all I had to do was put the old number seven on it. <laughs> True story. Did not know that. Yep, you're welcome, world. Pride comes before the fall. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I so yeah, um, your boo boo kits. Um, you can actually, you can go to like PetSmart or pet stores, and you can get. Uh, like fish antibiotics, mm -hmm. and you can put those in your in your rotation, so you can use just for you as a yeah yeah. Really? If you need antibiotics, you can just because they're cheaper. Why, why? And you can actually buy them like over the counter instead of because you're not going to go to the oh. pharmacist and say, "Hey, give me some amoxicillin, give me or, some amoxicillin <laughs> or penicillin or whatever." Uh -huh. But I mean, you can buy those things at the pet store. <coughs> Excuse me. Loopholes. Yeah. Loopholes. That's. The but they also have things like, uh, like Coflex. I don't know what that is. Uh, the wrap. Oh, gotcha. Sticky wrap and stuff like that. So I mean, those are some things to kind of think about. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you're uncomfortable with buying alcohol and storing alcohol away from your kids, then that's I don't know. Don't do it. Don't be a sissy. But I wouldn't do it. I don't Sissy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, luckily, rubbing alcohol is cheap. Oh, rubbing, uh, yeah, me, rubbing alcohol. See, I don't I've drink. Got a ton of it. I don't drink. I went through a time that I did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have, and I drink coffee. Not during the summer, though, because it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, I don't drink alcohol, but I do have it as part of my preparations because... People are still going to want to drink if everything goes down. And who knows what kind of gold you can score with a freaking <laughs> fifth of Jack. The, the one it's of the things, something to think about. One of the things that a guy pointed out, um, I was watching that guy, uh, Tiberius Rex, I think is his channel on YouTube. But um, he was talking about how, like, it's not, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but it's not, if you, if you only focus on, like, the personal protection, like, learning how to shoot and how to fire and how to, having all the guns in the world and having all the ammo and stuff, if you only focused on that, when it comes down to... Deer. I hope he doesn't knock me into the canal. When it comes down to the time when you need to, um, when you need to feed your family, and you, if you don't have stuff to feed your family with... Oh great yeah <laughs> i can't see past the weeds um <laughs> when you when you don't have if you don't have stuff to feed your family then you have to become a bad guy 
to feed your family and you take those guns and then you're the bad guy and it's going to bite you in the butt yeah if you you the the little things that you have the the day-to-day things that you need those are things that you have to you have to think of as well yeah but yeah i and on top of that the one thing that i can't stress enough is your medical so have band-aids um band-aids neosporin um or silvex that's what we have silver is a natural purifier yeah it's actually what they used to put in the in the water barrels on ships to make it across the ocean really yep they put a piece of silver in there so to keep it from spoiling was silvex like a uh... it uses silver but what is it like a ointment yeah it's it's like your triple antibiotic ointment yeah. but it uses silver yeah. but oh. it uses silver as the ingredient but um yeah, but not only that stuff, but you should also have a a like a for real trauma kit that has trauma shears, um, pressure tourniquet. yeah tourniquets, pressure dressings, um, all that kind of stuff. That stuff's expensive, but you can, <coughs> if you need it, you you freaking need it now. It's going to be three hundred, four hundred bucks. No, well, mine costs two hundred bucks, and it's pretty seven hundred bucks. All up, yeah. You can get like the full like the bags that the medics carry, and those are those get expensive. And if you can afford fifteen hundred bucks, no, I don't know. I just, <laughs> <laughs> if you if you can afford those those big backpacks that are stocked to the gills with you know IVs, tubing, yada yada yada, go for it. Get it. Put it in your put it in with your preparations. Um, like with any preparations, it's 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 very important to spend the time. To learn how to use them it's very important yes. to like if you if you have okay you have food storage okay that's fine um i i did i was thinking like power wise i wanted a, a way to have a hot meal without I, I, I just simple you know if we had to go and i bought uh Fire? T- 10 mres oh yeah and i just bought mres and with our kids we had a night where i was like okay we're gonna try the you know we're gonna eat this and, and i bought them because i'm calling wanted, dcfs what it no i'm going to I've eaten those things. Oh, I know. You brought them after, after when you, I think when you were, you would do drill, we, we, I remember you bringing me one once and I thought it was the best thing ever. And I was telling my wife about it and she tried it. She's like, this is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but we, with my kids, we had a, we had a night where it was like, okay, this is what we're going to eat for dinner. Because if it comes to the point where I need my kids to be able to, to know how to make those or know how to really be okay with it, I can't have them being like, no, I want, I want chicken or oh, I want ketchup or all, you know whatever it is the stuff that we normally give them it's like no we got to be able to your kids need time to acclimate to it as well you you need a little bit of experience with the things that you're using for pre- preparedness yeah. and that goes a long way yeah all the tools and all the equipment in the world won't do you any good if you don't know how to use them and there's the youtube is a good tool for you to utilize but there's also professional people that you can pay money to sometimes a lot of money to Mm -hmm. and learn how to use it and i understand sometimes we don't want to spend money on things that we don't want to spend money on but there's things that we should spend money on that we need to spend money on that's why you need to look at it again that masculine is is making is sacrificing the the immediate just the 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 fun nice cool thing for now the the shiny flashy thing for what your family needs yeah I don't know if that's necessarily masculine. It's responsible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so look at those. Look at uh, look at uh, your first aid kits and your trauma kits. Um, they cost money, but it's one of those things. If you need it, you need it. And the place that I got my trauma kit on my gun belt from, if I ever use any of those things in there to save a life, they replace it. Really? Yeah, they'll send a new, awesome. a new insert. Is that Dark Angel? <coughs> well, I don't know if I can use their name. Oh, do I have to edit that out? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Why not? That's like free advertising. That is free advertising. It's a site that is dark and it's angelic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the one I use. I don't, I don't know if you can say it or not. I got the Dark Angel medical... Um, IFAC, whatever the hell it's called. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I remember 100% for sure. I remember looking at them and I haven't bought one yet. But it was like 200 bucks, and that's on 
that's on my belt which if anything happens the belt for sure is getting clipped on me and i'm going so i have that i also keep a compass on my belt <coughs> but that that's a conversation for another time well, again you gotta learn how to use it yeah which it, yeah i'm not saying you don't know how to use it kind of it's been a while i need to relearn how to use it it's been a while for me as well okay well, is there anything else you want to bring up no well everybody conference is coming up tomorrow tomorrow you you'll probably well, I, this won't go live until wednesday probably probably so i try to bring them come to go put them out on wednesdays well it won't be live then either it'll be recorded it's live right now it'll go live wednesday coming to premiered live on wednesday <sighs> We don't live stream. <laughs> it's because we have to protect all the stupid things we say. <laughs> we want to say lots of stupid shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but again, just treat people good. Um, don't, don't, um, don't be a sucker, but also don't, don't be malicious and treat treat people good. Yeah. Have hope. Spread love. Be kind. Be kind. Be kind. You can't see it, but that's what that says. Be kind. You don't have one. I do have one, but... It doesn't say be kind. It says O-U-R. Yes. Yes. Some people will know what that means. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can say that one. Back to Charity. That's... Yeah. Operation that's, Underground Railroad. That's a group deserving of charity. They go, if you don't know who they are, they go and they rescue children who have been um, trafficked into... Um, sex sex uh, sex slavery and i can't think of anything worse i was listening to the, I, I don't know if you've heard the so what's the guy's name uh tim ballard yeah tim ballard tim ballard he was um he w he was doing a training down in uh was it columbia i don't know somewhere i don't think it was columbia anyways he was doing a training a foreign training he was training this government these government officials how to find and um and do a st sting operations on the sex, sex slave, sex trafficking and stuff like that. And he went down there and he was, it was like a three day training. He was, he was working for the, I think it was the FBI or CIA or something like that. One of our um, intelligence organizations. And he was like, he did this training and he, and he showed them, okay, here's what you do. Here's how you find these people. And he actually with them found a group that was, a, that was, um, d that was operating in that area. And he's like, okay, this is what you need to do to, to get rid of these people. And he showed them, and they were like, okay, but we can't do that type of a thing. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go with you, and we'll, we'll do it together. We'll, we'll have the sting operation together. And the government's like, no, you don't have jurisdiction. You can't do that. And he's like, okay, well, I quit. And he quit, and he, um, and he went and did that sting operation. He took the, the local authorities there, showed them how to do the sting operation, and they saved, I think, 18 people, and that was, that was what, two years ago? Three yeah. years ago, he does that stuff all the time. And now he's, he he quit and he's he's created a <clears throat> this this charity that goes and he does that. He 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 they've saved how many thousands of people? I don't know, a lot. A lot of a lot Not of people, children, children specifically. Well, yeah, yeah. Kids should be off limits. It should be just a general thing. Anybody that would do anything like that to a kid deserves to be gut shot and lit on fire. I can't argue with that. I won't back down from there either. I know that's not very compassionate. <laughs> that's the thing is like, Hypocrite. I mean, what, look at what Christ said. He said, if you harm <coughs> these little children, and I don't remember, I think in the context, supposedly he was talking about leading them astray from the gospel. But if you would, if you would harm a child, it's better for you to, to take a millstone and tie it around your neck and cast, cast into in the, the sea. sea. And it's like, Christ didn't have any respect for that. He didn't have any... Um, he, he, he was very, very plain, and, and, and he spoke. He said, yes, yes, no, no. His, yeah. his yes meant yes, and his no meant no. Yes. Be kind to one another. Love each other. Fight evil. Fight evil. Buy a gun. Buy a gun. <laughs> this is Elders Rising, Episode 5. Not the Empire Strikes Back. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. <laughs> Boba Fett. Ow. Oh, I didn't hit play. Oh.